back in all those years of development, one of the movies that we looked at that was similar to ours, it's a family picture set in a family-run restaurant, uh, kind of a PG, PG-13 movie, uh, was Mystic Pizza. I had written that up into uh, a business plan which I share with potential investors. Well, I actually met the producer, Larry Jackson, who was with Samuel Goldwyn at that time, who made Mystic Pizza possible. And he asked to take a look at the screenplay. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to have him come and speak to the downtown Albany business community. For the last 20 years, since the picture was released in 1988, it has been written about 317 times in the New York Times alone, keeping it active in people's awareness. In one of those articles, the headline was on Mystic. Fame is not fleeting. There was an article about how the interest in Mystic had been sustained and the economy boosted on an ongoing basis because of the film. Now, in talking with the Chamber of Commerce and the Film Commission of Mystic, Connecticut, I asked them, what's been the impact of, of Mystic? And this was a couple years ago, before Larry came to speak. And they said, it's like having a two-hour commercial that plays all around the world for free. You know, if you want something like that, if, if Albany wants something like that, then, you know, Grazing Miss Albany may be that next Mystic Pizza here in Albany. Patrick Joseph O'Reilly, what is going on? Hey, everybody, good news. You know, every week he's in here causing trouble, parking that damn rig out front, stinking up the whole block with fumes. Think he can write crap like that? Come on in, we need the money. He didn't write it. I wrote it. Unlike Mystic, Connecticut, I think Albany has a tremendous opportunity to not only film Grazing Miss Albany, but other motion pictures here. Uh, one of the interesting things that came out of Mystic Pizza was that they had a production assistant working on the picture. That was 22 years ago. That person now runs a full-fledged studio in Connecticut. And that's one of the potential um, outcomes you, that could come out of this movie. If we, and our plan is to allow high school and college student interns to be on this project, they'll be attracted to this industry. They'll all see that, yes, there's a mystery to it, but it's not impossible, so it can be a doorway for other students to begin to get involved in media and the arts and motion pictures. Yeah. Well, let me just say that we've had interns uh, from all the upstate colleges expressing it, from anywhere from Siena to SUNY Albany to College of St. Rose um, to RPI to Hudson Valley to Ithaca. Syracuse uh, and so we're giving them an opportunity to go and follow their dream and uh, the best opportunity for anyone interested in making movies is to be on set uh, just as I did uh, when I first started to form Upstate Independence back in 1995. Uh, that, those were the opportunities where I learned the most, I made contacts and uh, hone my own skills and develop my own vision. And that's, you know, that's a rare opportunity, I think, in upstate New York. Hopefully it becomes less rare. But those would be the same opportunities we'd be offering, offering college and high school interns. I don't know exactly how it's going to unfold, but certainly my mission has been to create projects that I can hire folks locally, and that's what I've done so far. Uh, so the same with Grazing Miss Albany, our interest is in hiring locally. That's uh, wise for us because it's, it's cost effective for us. So if people can, if we don't have to put students up in hotels or PAs, production assistants in hotels, that's more uh, cost effective for us. So we want to fill in as many skilled positions with local talent, and right now we have local skilled uh, craftspersons in almost every department 